In this video series, we've been talking about amortization. In the first video, we learned how to do straight line amortization. Uh, that's where amortization is the same every full year. In the second video, we learned units of production amortization. That's where amortization fluctuates with the amount we use our asset. Uh, the final method we're going to learn, and it's outlined here in part C, again it's the same question we're doing, we've done parts A and B, we're just going to look at part C now. Uh, the final method we're going to learn is called double declining balance. And what double declining balance says is, it's more realistic for an asset to lose more of its value up front. They say when you, uh, when a car loses its, the most value is the moment you drive it off the lot. And I always think of double declining balance method in this way. It's called an accelerated amortization method and it, it tries to capture the fact that assets lose value or drop in value quite quickly in the early years and slower over time. So I'm going to actually, uh, just, Hold on. I'm going to just uh, erase the first parts A and B and we'll focus on what was part C uh, on double declining balance method. So let me get my pen tool ready uh, and let's read through the question. Uh, the question says, Tinker Inc. buys a new truck for $25,000 on September 1st, 2012. The truck is expected to be useful for five years, after which time the manager hopes to sell it for $5,000. Uh, the manager estimates the truck will be driven for 300,000 kilometers during its five-year life. Uh, the company has a December 31st fiscal year. Assuming the manager wishes to use double declining balance amortization, calculate the amortization for uh, each year of ownership of the truck. Okay. So, uh, when we did straight line and double declining balance, we had to calculate the amortizable cost. When we do double declining balance, that's not going to be the starting point of our question. Uh, the starting point of our question is actually to calculate a percentage, and it's based on straight line amortization. So we base our uh, double declining balance on the number of years, in the same way we did straight line amortization. So with straight line, we said, okay, we're going to amortize this asset over five years. With double declining, we just want to make that a ratio. Each year represents one-fifth amortization. And if I want to restate that as a percentage, that's 20% amortization. And again, how did I get that? Well, I just took the number one, always number one, and divided it by five years. And I went one divided by five, that's 20%. One fifth is twenty percent. Now that would be great if we were doing single declining balance. This method is called double declining balance. So you take that twenty percent and double it. Twenty percent times two is forty percent. That's what makes this an accelerated amortization method. We are going to amortize this thing fast. Our amortization is not twenty percent; it's forty percent per year. Now it's a declining balance method, and so the math of it's a little bit different. And you kind of have to—I find—you have to make a table to to figure out how to do this. So let's make our table. Uh, so we'll put year on the left. Uh, then I'm going to put beginning. BV, and what BV stands for is the book value of our assets, so our beginning book value. Um, I'll, I'll put a column here for partial year, and it's just for the first year, really. If I have a partial year, I want to put the number of months down. Uh, then I'm going to put the rate, which we calculated as 40%, our amortization expense, and our ending BV or our ending value, our ending book value of our assets. So we're going to fill out this table for all five years of this asset's useful life starting in 2012. So in 2012 our beginning book values, which is what we paid for the asset, we bought an asset for 25000 according to our records the asset's worth 25000 Is the first year a partial year? Absolutely. It's only going to be from September 2012 to December 31st, 2012. That's our fiscal year. And whenever I talk years, I'm talking fiscal years. It just happens. We have a December 31st fiscal year. And, but I'm only going to be worried about September, October, November, December. Years matter here, just like with straight line. Four months. So I'm going to say, oh yeah, it's four twelfths of the year. Uh, my amortization rate. 40%. So my amortization expense is actually quite easy now that I've laid it out. It's 25,000 times 4 twelfths times 40%. 
So let's uh, crunch that number. Um, 25,000 times 4 divided by 12 times 0.4, And I get the number 3333. So now I've got to say, oh, after I've done that, what's the value of my asset according to my records? The value of my asset according to my records is the 25 grand I paid for it minus the 33, 33 I've amortized off of it. 25 minus 33, 33 is 21,667. Oops, 21,667. So 2012 is in the bag. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what about that $5,000 residual value that we've been worried about? Well, $5,000 residual value isn't going to come into play until the very end. But yes, when we finish this question, and I don't know how far down to go, I need to remind myself I've got to stop when I get to a $5,000 residual value. I can't amortize past that. I have to end on that $5,000 number, but we'll worry about that later. Um, let's do 2013. So 2013, I've got to say, okay, what did I start 2013 with in terms of a book value? And the book value at the beginning of 2013 was 21,667. Is it a partial year? No, I'm not even going to worry about that column then. The amortization rate is indeed 40%. 21,667 times 40% is 8,667. So our amortization expense here is going to be 8667 bringing the the uh, ending book value from 21667 minus 86667 sorry my uh, mouth full from these uh, numbers and I get an ending book value of $13,000 good thing now our numbers are going to be a lot more even 2014, I started with an asset with a book value of $13,000. Again, it's a full year. It's not a partial year. I want to amortize it for 40%. Uh, 13,000 times 40% is 5,200. I started the year with 13,000. I've reduced the assets value by 5,200. It's 13,000 minus 5,200. is 7800 on to 2015 I started with an asset that was on my books for 7800 I'm gonna take 40 percent amortization and so 7800 times 0 0.4 is 3120 now I'm gonna stop right here and I can see I'm bumping into a problem I've said that I'm not going to amortize this asset below $5,000. This asset has to remain at $5,000. And I can see if I amortize this for 40%, which was 3120, 7800 minus 3120 is going to take me below $5,000. It's going to take my ending book value down below uh, $5,000. So again, if I had done this, I'll maybe just squeeze it in here at the bottom of the page because we're not going to do it. I would go 7800, 40%, and get. 3120 and of course 7800 minus 3120 is uh, 4680. Well, I've got to put on the brakes. I've got to hit the stop sign here. I can't go below my residual value in terms of amortization. So in this case, I'm not even going to multiply by 40%. I'm going to say, look, I need to end up at 5000, no lower. If my default amortization is going to take me below 5000, I just plug in the number that gets me there. And the correct number to get us there looks like 2,800. And again, that's just 7,800 minus the 5,000 is 2,800. Now for 2016, 2017, I don't amortize anymore. I start with an asset worth 5,000. My amortization is zero. I end with an asset of 5,000. And the same is true in 2017. 5,000, zero, ending at 5,000. Again, this bottom was just to show you. Uh, I'm going to just scratch it out because that's not what we did. So double declining balance as you can see is a much more aggressive amortization uh, method and interestingly again we don't start with our amortizable cost we start with our book value or the cost of our asset uh, and we amortize based on that where our residual value comes in is 
we've got to know when to stop amortizing the asset. In this case, we stopped in 2015. Uh, that was our final year of amortization. After that, if we're still using the asset and we still think it can be traded for $5,000 or, or sold for $5,000, we just keep it on the books at $5,000. This is called double declining balance method. And as you can see, it's a very accelerated amortization method. Now, when I add up my amortization expense, there should be a familiar number. 3333 plus 8667 is uh, 12,000, 5,200, and 2,800 is 8,000. Total up the whole column, and you get 20,000. And that, of course, is our amortizable cost. We said we were going to amortize this asset for 20,000. Now we have. Now, comparing our three methods, going all the way to the bottom, straight line, same amortization every year for each full fiscal year. Uh, units of production varies with our production. If we drive more kilometers, we amortize more. If we drive fewer kilometers, we amortize less. Last double declining balance is aggressive amortization. It amortizes your asset quickly. And so you can see it's, it's a much higher level of amortization in the early years than the other two, and, and it fully amortizes the asset much more quickly. So those are the three methods of amortization that are taught in most intro accounting classes. Certainly those are the three that I touch on uh, in a big way in my class, and I hope you've uh, learned and understood all of them. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to sell an asset at a gain or loss.